Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Anime on Draft, episode number 22. Unfortunately, uh, we are not all together this time, but uh, we you know, we'll make it work. <clears throat> we'll make It'll it work. happen. Things will be good. So, <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of uh, topics we want to talk about today, um, but before we start, um, we got a couple different beers today and I unfortunately will uh, not be partaking in either of them. Um, I'm being a baby and not drinking for like the next three weeks so I can uh, have a my beautiful girlish figure um, on this cruise that I'm going on in a couple weeks. So. <sighs> yeah, I need to need to you know slim down a little bit. No no beer, uh, no alcohol, um, no pizza. It's kind of nice. It's yeah. I mean, it's actually kind of nice not drinking. Like I I haven't drank for like the past like since <clears throat> we since we did the uh, the stone beer or whatever. It's been it's been yeah. kind of enjoyable. Like a lot more, you know, if you uh, just cut tacos, this weekend. it would have a similar effect, dude. <laughs> well, I've been I mean, drinking this whole weekend. Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> I, did, I, I haven't mean, drank you... since the last time we uh, recorded. Nice. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> great. This is really a long <laughs> All right, let's. I know, it's kind of <laughs> great, funny, actually. All right, let's move on. <laughs> So, um, with that said, um, in that great, uh, awkward silence, let's, uh, let's talk about your beers, guys. Uh, what, what are you, what are you drinking today? Rolando, you want to start? Uh, sure. I've got the okay. BJ's Brewing Blonde. It's a Kolsch style ale. So, uh, Alec, you want to introduce your beer? Yeah, I've got the Maui Brewing Co. Bikini Blonde Lager. Bikini Delicious. Bottom Blonde. That would be a cool name for a beer, to be honest. But you would probably need Nickelodeon's approval. And that might be hard to get to yeah, have them tie won't. alcohol with SpongeBob. They yeah, where's Dan Snyder, you know, yeah. dude? Dan Schneider, <laughs> dude. Huckin' <and> Dan <laughs> Snyder, dude. <laughs> so. Well, like I said, I'm not yeah. drinking, so you guys drink up for me and uh, so tell, tell mine our is lovely a listeners. Beautiful, uh, beautiful blonde color. Beautiful blonde. Beautiful blonde. It's almost like bikini blonde kind of color. Mm. It's Sounds kept like the head for I would quite like. a while. Yeah, it, it's exactly the type of thing you would like. This is the color if it were hair. You'd be like all over. <laughs> Straw color. Anyways. <laughs> so it keeps the head for a while. Um, once again, I'm drinking the Maui Brewing Co. Bikini Blonde Lager. Um, it smells like a blonde lager. Um it's really carbonated. And for me, it was a six pack in a can. And the can is actually pretty cool. It's like two tone. The, the bottoms. The, the tiki what? faces on the the statues on the front. Or is no, that this one's got green? turtles. Turtles. It's got like a chick reclining, it, like a, a silhouette of a chick reclining. And they have like a bikini and then like a sun. It's kind of a cool little art thing. And then they got a turtle and then the islands of Hawaii with the latitude and longitude of the island they are on and so it's actually just like a pretty cool can it's got like at the top it's got like that typical like you, you see like the tribal tattoos you know it's got that going around the top of the can um so cool can get it in six pack a crisp a clean crisp and refreshing hellas perfect anytime 5.2 percent by volume so not too bad good 5. session two percent for a blonde lager that's crazy yeah dude but still, not a bad I mean, session beer. A little like, high. You don't want like ten of them. But. It's only like two percent higher than like a, a regular beer though. Two percent. Yeah. I mean, I think of like, like a blonde lager. I'm like three percent, good to go. I think like I three point eight. Yeah. Anyways, five tastes like inside. a blonde. It's really good. Uh, I've never had anything from Maui Brewing Co. before. Oh. It's really weedy. Good malt. If you were um, to compare yeah. this one to the um, the other beers that we've had from um, the Hawaiian Islands or whatever, it's like <laughs> the the Longboard or is that is oh, that like their blonde? Oh, we had the one on a big wave. That's also that's yeah. Long. We had the that's big wave. Um, no, no, that's you know yeah. It's a blonde lager, right? No, it's a golden lager. Sorry. No, it's a golden. The blonde is the longboard, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, it's similar to the longboard. I think this is better. I like this better than the longboard, 
and I like the long. I've never board heard a lot, of. Uh, I've never heard of this one because whenever I think of the uh, the Hawaiian beers, I think of the other <laughs> brand. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, like um, I didn't see it. I just saw the name. I was like looking for a blonde uh, beer, and I saw this. I was like, huh, neat bottle or neat can. I'll grab that. Uh, excuse me. And um, I am actually really surprised by how much I like it. It's very good. Um, like I said, I like it better than the longboard and longboard. I really like the longboard. So anyways, before I hog too much time, Rolando, mm-hmm. how's your beer? Good, sir. Uh, it's good. I mean, I already drank half the glass because it's very light. <laughs> um, it's got, you know, that golden straw color. Um, I'll describe the can like you did. Uh, it's a it's a yellow can with a blonde um, holding a glass and she's in a red dress. You know, she looks like Drew's type, you know, a blonde, <laughs> 2D, <laughs> big boobs. 2D, so, yeah, there you um, go. So, you've, you've, and she's holding a beer. It to a so, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'll find one on the cruise, dude. Maybe I'll find one on the cruise. Yeah, you'll find one. <laughs> yeah, dude. You take a, little, a picture a with the can. You'd you be like, hey, check out. it out. I found her. Um, <laughs> you take his selfie. You'll snap it. Um, I mean, it's it's a lot like the the Kona um, Big Wave, actually, um, as I drink it. It's very light easy to drink um it doesn't have the uh the wheat like as big of a wheat taste as the as the big wave but Mm -hmm. it's fairly light um i don't know if i just had this sitting out for a while because i kind of poured it out and then was like hey are we gonna record um, poured it out for the homies yeah i poured it out um but there's not too much carbonation but i don't remember there being like a lot of carbonation when I um, drank it previously. So it's good. It's very drinkable, easy to drink. If you are um, not a fan of bitter, this is definitely not a bitter beer at all whatsoever. None. Nope. When did uh, when did BJ start bottling or canning their beer? Because I... I've like looked uh, for some of their stuff before, but I've like never been able to find it. I have no idea. I just I'm found this sure. at Bevmo. I think been, was just like, oh, cool. Mm. <clears throat> I think they've been doing it for a while, but I never see it at Bevmo's uh, in San Diego. Yeah, I, I never see it. And it's like they have good beer. So. Yeah, they do have good beer. Uh, but I've never actually seen it at Bevmo's in San Diego. It might be because I'm pretty sure the headquarters for BJ's is in L.A. So it is. Maybe they yeah. just only do it there. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Know. who knows whatever whatever well uh, do you guys want to rate your uh, beer before we move on sure yeah. um go ahead Alex. so mine's really drinkable um the carbonation has a good feel to it it's smooth um well color is appealing the smell is appealing and just all in all i think it's a good solid beer like i said i like it better than the longboard and i'm a big fan of the longboard and the kona big wave um so I'm going to give this a, a four, a four, <laughs> a four. I was, yeah, I was either going to go 4.25 or four. I'll give it a four. I think a four a is four. solid. Oh. Yeah, four. Oh, a four. Oh. Yeah, four. Yeah, a four. A four, he says. Mm-hmm. Oh, hmm. Yes, a four. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. What yeah. are you thinking, yeah. Rolando, for for your guy? Um, This one... It's very similar to that Kona Big Wave. Um, So, I mean, I would recommend if you are not uh, like a part, like if you're not a beer drinker, just because you don't like the taste of beer, this one's kind of more, it's kind of more like malty. So it's not, it's not like displeasing to taste. It's very light. You're not going to get very drunk off of it unless you like drink like a six pack. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> it's very easy to drink and um, it's cheap too. So I think this was like $5 for a six pack or something like that. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
I might be wrong, but uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember because I bought it like a week ago. Um, well, yeah. So I, I'm going to give this like a three and a half. You know, it's good. It's not like amazing, but it's not bad. It's good. I feel like I should mention, uh, for... this isn't as cheap. Mine. I'll just mention that. It's not as cheap. <laughs> I feel like with blondes, like kind of like, oh my god, (laughs) kind of (laughs) like uh, what you were what you were saying, Rolando. It's like they're not good, they're not bad, they're just kind of are. That's like when I think of like blonde style beers. It's just like it's beer and it's like refreshing and good, but it's not like gonna knock your socks off for the most part. At least for me, I'm not wowed by it, but I'm I also don't hate it. So exactly, I um. it's, it's really nice to have this because it's been so flipping hot the past few days mm-hmm. that it's just really refreshing and it tastes really good right now because of that. Um, as blondes go, though, it is definitely I think it's up there. So I rated it as blondes. If I were to compare it to stouts in terms of like thing like the stouts we've had, it wouldn't be rated as high. But Ooh. that's unfair because they're apples and oranges. Yeah. Why can't fruit be compared? Um, because because. One is better than the other. And everyone knows that. Yes, because of opinions. Yes. <laughs> because preferences. <laughs> preferences, exactly. <laughs> preferences. As we spoke about last week. With uh, with that, let's uh, move on to our uh, anime topics. Um, I don't know what we want to start Let's start off with uh, gamers. Um more misunderstandings this week and they play that fucked up board game that was fucking hilarious um but i think we kind of, the biggest part of the episode is we get the uh the realization of um chiaki chaiki um and amon <laughs> i don't know why that was so funny to me and uh, amano um <clears throat> basically he's like playing the she like goes out of the room chiaki does and then like amano picks up his phone game and uh just when we thought you know tendo and amano were like gonna bond over the game chiaki comes back and then he's like oh yeah my name is this in the game and there's this friend uh, mono san who i always uh always depend on and chiaki's just like stunned and being like he's saying really nice things about me and he doesn't even know like that it's me he's talking about and then just more misunderstandings because nobody can talk to each other. Well, I mean, pretty much. Uruhara uh, was like face balling. <laughs> you just like, oh my god. <laughs> Some of the faces he made were uh, pretty godlike. Although I, I like, <laughs> uh, I Go do ahead. have to say that um, you were talking about this last week. I was like, there's two things that could happen in the next episode. It's going to be focused on Chiaki or. It's going to be focused on clearing up the stuff between Aguri and uh, Uehara, and we got both of those. <laughs> so. It did do both. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. At least we got some resolution. Yeah, between some. it's just the Uehara and Aguri. A lot of the misunderstandings are gone. It's just now there's a new situation. There's yeah, a, new, a love they, triangle. You, you know why? It's, yeah, it's a new you triangle. You know why though? Because they actually why? just asked. <laughs> they talk to each That's other. True. Yeah. A yeah, novel concept. Like, although they weren't very direct about it. It was like, is is a uh, Tendo san uh, uh, pr- a problem? No, why? Oh, I guess she isn't. Okay. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? I think they're all stupid. But I do agree that that game, that board game, it's like a super fucked up. It's like an adult version of the game of life. Oh, yeah. Because that shit was messed mm-hmm. up. It's like, you guys got busy <laughs> too hard and broke your bed. Pay 6,000 yen. It's like, what the fuck it, is this? It was the game? best because Karen kept getting, like, bones. Yeah. Just like- yeah. <laughs> your crush got married. You focus on work. Make 50,000 yen year, a year more. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm so, I'm so rich. Yeah, hey. She's I'm like, so pissed. <laughs> She's got, like, the purple around her like they do whenever people are mad. Oh, that was so yeah. good. <laughs> He's like, I think she seems like in a worse mood than when she came here. <laughs> um, I also like the, the ending thing, monologue. The what? From Urahara. The ending monologue. That was, this is the look of a girl who came to, who found her first love just too late or something like that. Oh, a completely yeah. hopeless girl. I was laughing at that. That shit was funny. <laughs> 
Um, the other thing that we kind of get out of this episode is we meet Chiaki's little sister, uh, Konoha. Um, she was mentioned in the previous episode saying, you know, oh, I have a cute little sister. I'm worried about her, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but she's apparently an arrow gamer. So she's, um, what's her name <laughs> uh, from uh, My Little Sister Can't Be This Cute. What the fuck's her name? Kirino. Um, yeah, Kirino. So we got a Kirino who is, we, we lost we lost a Geary to the love quad truple whatever and we added a new player you know konoha because she sees him in the shop give uh the, the kid with amnesia which that is just never going to be explained i guess <laughs> um, that's part he, of the amato's, <laughs> amato's, that's why he's uh, playing introducing the, him. the arrow game or the the gal games dude he's trying to find himself yeah <laughs> in the in the gal in games, the gal games the he's days. trying to figure out his his preferences dude <laughs> Uh, but yeah Amato like recommends him like this like old school game and for some reason Konoha you know recognizes it and she like looks like one of the characters on the front of it and she's like likes him because he's not going for all the norms Um, she kind of like mentions it when she's looking at the games like especially like the blonde gal game that uh, he played earlier and stuff like that it's like oh it's mainstream whatever um, but it's, it'll be interesting to see how she ties into this cause there's like only four episodes left. So it's kind of hard to introduce a new character and have any kind of character development other than she's the student council president. She wants to be Karen and she likes gal games. <laughs> what's, what's weird is like, so I think she's like only like a year younger than them, but she's always seen mm-hmm. Karen as like a, as like a rival. So I just thought that mm-hmm. was kind of weird. Cause I, the, for some reason, the impression I got last episode, because um, Chiaki kept saying that, oh, like, um, I'm here with my little sister. She's cute. I just immediately assumed like, oh, her little sister is like 10, you know, but she's yeah. just like a year yeah, younger. Yeah. Why, and why yeah, did she go she to another like school? I, I don't know. Probably because Karen goes to Wait, that school. Wait, are they first years? No. Like... The, and all them. I think they're second year. I don't think she oh, she's not in middle school. The no. the other sister's in high school. Yeah, um, because yeah, the younger so. sisters split, like went to a different high school. <clears throat> mm-hmm. She did it to to get away. She, from I think her, she goes. To, I yeah. think she Trouble goes to like past. an all girls school. Maybe that's why. Yeah, because she did sniff the seat and go. It smells of fresh maiden. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I remembered Jesus that. Christ. I fresh remembered that very vividly because she she rubbed her head on yeah. a chair which i thought was disgusting and then said this smells of fresh maiden. that's what her car freshener like, that's the smell fresh oh, maiden, fresh yeah. maiden. You, she just wipes a, something all over the AKA, chair after they sit there and uh, it. aka pantsu i was gonna say aka used used pants oh yeah used pants i forgot the adjective <laughs> gym pants bloomers but <laughs> I thought this episode was good, though. Kind of like a segue episode. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm glad at least Agiri and Uehara um, have kind of had their sort of resolution. I hope there's no more misunderstandings with that. Yeah. Um, and they'll they'll probably get some, like, development within their relationship. You know, we talked about uh, before, you know, Uehara discovers that Agiri liked him when he was a nerd and things like that. So hopefully we get uh, more development with that. I still, I still want Karen to win, you know, after the last couple of episodes with her, I'm like, she's, you know, not only the blonde and whatever, but you know, she's, she's pretty good. Um, <laughs> but, um, I don't like the, the continuing running joke of like, yes, commander. Okay. Commander. Oh, yeah. Like that's, I got a little stupid. annoyed when he was like, yes. Yeah. And we're just like, stop doing and every, that. And, every, look like an and even everyone at the table is like, like, what the, f- shut the fuck up. Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The um, yes, sir. It's getting a little old. Yeah, it was dumb. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I did like the episode. I thought it was really funny. I was yeah. laughing a lot. Mm-hmm. Me yeah. too. I thought it was one of their funnier, like overall through the whole episode episodes. Yeah, just the, <laughs> yeah. the shit that was happening in the board game was funny. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. that was great. I like when she finally got the last one, um, uh, uh, Tendo. And it's like, <laughs> you make more money at work now. And they're like, she's like, they're not even trying anymore. <laughs> it's just like, you make more money for no reason or whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
Or it's like they they add like a kid to their car and they're like, take responsibility. <laughs> no, it's just like how how pointed everything was because it's like mm. your crush, um, your your former crush um hits on you and then but your love is is too strong for your current your current lover, so you have another kid. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't I like Uhara. That that he was... like he. he he like cheats on cheats on his uh his lover like with their sister or whatever then the door slams oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i like the one where it's um chiaki and she gets it and it, what was it? it was like you uh you realize that you're in love with somebody or whatever and he's like i can't with believe else. yeah <laughs> yeah i can't mm. believe how accurate this is and then he gets the same one and he's like ah just like, like how star cross can you get yelling. Yeah, and then yeah, it happens that episode. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. Was, oh, dude, that's so good. It was a really good episode. That was a good one. Board, They've been doing so a good job. We, we've got it right. now. The board board games are good plot devices. Yes. They are. There you go. Yeah, because you can there write you whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Create your own board game. <laughs> that's a good idea. All right, let's. Uh, Let's talk about uh, Classroom of the Elite now. Um, Rolando, what did you think of uh, this episode? Um, I was actually kind of annoyed with this episode. Um, a lot of stuff happened, and I I had a feeling as soon as like I saw they were on a boat and shit, and, like they're going to do some sort of like... Hunger Games <sighs> shit? Yeah, like they're going to they're gonna <laughs> do like Battle Royale, some sort of thing... <laughs> Um, and it was like, like, of course, like they're putting all these classes against each other. But like, I, I am like interested in seeing like what happens because I don't think it's going to stick to particular classes, the, you know, like the groups that form. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff that was like annoying this episode. Like every, like clearly like pseudo and the other idiots from class D clearly still don't have an idea like what's going on. Don't even understand how to sit in a restaurant and not pick a fight and then we've got like class c dude is like apparently a fucking rapist or like something like he just like <laughs> sexually harasses all the female like students and it's like uh i don't know they're, well, they're he, and he can get away like with it because he's got that big black dude with him. Yeah, <laughs> that always speaks English, that's I guess. Enough. And then I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say what we were saying, but like people seemed a certain way this episode, and they couldn't do things properly. And then you got Alex's favorite cane girl is like trying to talk like she's all serious and shit, but. She's talking on the phone and Check. playing chess by herself. <laughs> yeah, and trying to make Show it how seem smart like she's cool and strategic. She is. Did you not see her glass of whiskey? Everyone knows yeah. that anyone who sits alone playing chess with a glass of whiskey is about to just destroy the world. They're gonna win everything. Uh, yeah, she is. Yeah, the more, end all more board games this. being uh, plot devices. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Kane girl, is, she's the one to watch out for, not Ayano Koji. Kane yeah. girl. Kane well, then girl. they then they just had uh, <laughs> they had that fucking uh, blonde dude who's just like ripped as shit, just like walking around. <laughs> dude, yeah. the side, like, <laughs> that was what, hilarious. What the fuck, fuck was that? <laughs> what the I love how he barely said anything, but whenever he did, it was like beautiful, and that's all he would just it's fucking beautiful. Say. <laughs> I've never <laughs> wiped myself down. What's that phrase? Like dripping what? with manliness. Dripping. Ha, 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 ha. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going? This on? is see like maybe. Now, Go ahead. The, I I guess they're doing it like to remind us that he's in their class or something because he's probably gonna play a role in like what's going on Maybe. on the island. But it's just like it was like two random ass scenes of him <clears throat> just like yeah being jacked and like walking around the boat. Like all right, <laughs> I <laughs> figured that's a, that's good for. So it's a good thing you saw this episode now because now you know what to do when you're on the cruise. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. I'm like I'm going on a cruise. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> you just, you know, walk you're just not going to wipe yourself down. Yeah. And just now you know what to say wet. to people that ask you, why didn't you like dry <laughs> off? <laughs> dry off? <laughs> now, the only question is, what do you tell people when you slip and fall on your face? Because dripping you manliness. Up. <laughs> dripping Sorry, I slipped on my own manliness. Manliness. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I think the massage the massage was kind of funny too, because clearly they talked about the spa. You know that there's going to be a scene where somebody's getting one of the girls with giant boobs is getting massage. But it was really funny that they brought in Rip Dude, and he's like, "Ah, oh, yes, oh I do. This is wonderful. I do. They were going to do like, that because <laughs> oh, yeah. like they showed him like right before, and then like they showed <clears throat> the thing again, and like this is going to be a joke, and then it was. Yeah. Equal opportunity fan service, dude. Good for Although them. he had small, <laughs> small fucking legs for being so ripped. It's because he skips yeah. leg day. Yeah, he does, apparently. Like, yeah, in order to get follow, that ripped, he follows you have Dom's to skip teachings. Leg <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. What, what am I going to do? It's like, oh, let's do legs. Hang on, let me get a couple curls in first. Oh, well, let's just do arms. We'll do legs tomorrow. Never do legs. <laughs> Never skip leg day. Unless you have a hurt Achilles, then skip leg day. <laughs> I don't know, kind of like a, a good setup episode. Um, Sakura like almost confesses, but she is also socially inept. Um, well, also crazy. We girl see, up, so. yeah, uh, Kushida yeah, she shows off. her other <laughs> yeah. her other side. I think Sakura um, knows she's she got sho- some sort of weirdness to her. I think she's just oh, afraid of true. people. That's true. I'm I'm like I was just like. In the scene with Iona Kuji and Kushida, I was just like waiting for him to like call her out when she's being because they're alone and she's being all like lovey dovey. How she's like, I was just waiting for him to say like, "Why are you being so fake in front of me?" <laughs> he he doesn't actually say that, but like it like does come out and she's like when he's like walking away. Like, and what she say? She's like, "I'm scared of being a scared of being alone or, or some shit." Like, I feel she's lonely like, Don't fucking when I'm all of a sudden. <clears throat> she said, happened. "I feel lonely when I'm all of a sudden alone or something like that." I don't know. Is how they translate. Yeah, so, <clears throat> fucking stupid. We'll see. He he's gonna catch her in the act and like have it like recorded sometime and just like blackmail the shit out of her and I'm just gonna love it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe. Yeah, but the teacher I, is gonna regret black um, uh, trying blackmailing to him. him, dude. Yeah, she's gonna regret trying to. Make yeah, him, that's said, that seemed said, like so. right at the beginning was probably was probably like the most important part of the episode. It's like she's basically. Get expelled and go back to your past, which is like fucked up kids dying in some hospital. Like we don't even know what's going on with that. Mm-hmm. Or <clears throat> and you're get to class A. It's like, is she trying to motivate him? Is she trying to elevate uh Susan A? Like, you know, what's what's her alternative? Yeah, what's in her no motive with she, that? It's kind of weird. And I mean she she obviously knows like about his past. Um she's mentioned it multiple times, like with with uh, Suzune and um to him too it's just like you know she knows what's going on she, she probably knows well, she said who a contacted him too, like that guy yeah yeah, yeah. she probably knows like so who it was knows. or whatever it's related she's probably like somehow. i don't know in cahoots with why he's at the school mm-hmm. i think all the teachers know too because when the other teacher was getting like orgasm massage she like <laughs> mentioned like oh you're gonna want to watch out for ayana kuji because uh you know, he's one of the main players in Class D. And then, uh, what's her name? Ichinose is like, no, I don't know. Like, he just seems like, you know, some normal, you know, weird I, guy. She was like, like no, it's, a, it's a gut feeling. And she's like, I need more than your gut. <laughs> the the feeling mm. I kind of got from that conversation was that Ichinose was kind of trying to not say his name on purpose. Mm. Because, like, she clearly, like knows he, there's something about him because she's always talking to him well, and, and she helped stuff. him get the cameras too yeah and so, <clears throat> so i have a feeling that, that she plan. may have a maybe she's some what maybe she's somehow related to his past i don't know but like it seems like she's trying mm. to like keep him a secret or something i don't know maybe she's trying to use she's him. his own own chan they're actually related they're like the same. Well, he age can't now. be an own. He can't be an own Achan because. <laughs> oh yeah, he's no. Like she because she is his own Achan. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's... <laughs> She's two months older, dude. Older sister. <laughs> From his older mother. sister's a prostitute. <laughs> Poor guy, dude. Oh, I feel mother. so bad for him. May, may, Maybe she maybe she was that boy who collapsed in that flashback and now she's a chick. She, yeah. And now she's a girl. She collapsed because of the surgeries. She was transitioning. <laughs> Anyways, that all got the dark. all the hormones. <laughs> that got dark really fast. Wow. <laughs> you guys got getting got against transgender people. Nothing. <laughs> It's 2017, of course not. How can you assume? Don't assume genders, dude. I don't even know your guys' genders. I don't assume anything. 
You just said you could be attacked. So yeah, it's a phrase. I don't know. I don't. I don't assume <laughs> you people's gender. I don't even so assume you your people. people. I don't under. I don't assume you. Are you assuming whatever you humans happen to be. in 2017? <laughs> I I, I sir am a door. An attack helicopter. An I sir am a door. Swa 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 swa. God. Anyway. Oh my God. Why everybody are we shut here? the fuck up. <laughs> Next show. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Moving on. <laughs> Just moving the fuck on. Uh, let's talk about Soccer <laughs> Quest. Uh, Alec, did you like this episode? Was it better than last week's? Because last week was awful. I mean, uh, saying it's better than last week's isn't really hard to do. Um, I do think it was better than last week's, but I thought it was meh. The one thing I have to say about this episode is that the fucking little kid girl person annoyed the shit out of me because I was like, leave Shiori alone. Just leave her alone. She's a nice girl. <laughs> and she's just being a total bitch to her. I'm like, you're a little dick. Like, that's all I kept thinking. But <clears throat> it's a little better. It was nice to see that they're like not waiting for their, you know, the whole thing was about dreams and they're not waiting for their dreams to come through true. They're like going out and doing shit or whatever. So I don't know. What do you think about it? Um, it was, it was better. I mean, um, the idiots were finally able to, uh, translate their, um, <laughs> what was it? Their, their, their map or whatever. Their, and then yeah, their code, their cipher. And then as, as, stu- <laughs> as, as stupid as they are, it's like, oh, it wasn't the actual golden dragon. It was just a toy. And the, the big thing out of that Spoilers. is like, well, dreams do come, dreams do come true. Everybody. You, because all our dreams came true all along. It's like the the fat cop, uh, in his dream, you know, wanted to be like a source of justice, and he's a cop now. Uh, the bus driver's well, dream was powers. to be an F. Yeah, um, the 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 bus driver, his dream was uh, to be an F one racer, and now he has to drive the bus <laughs> all around. So kind of similar. What I want to say about that guy, is, is, is that. He's like he wants to be an F one <laughs> racer, and he's driving a bus. If he considers that similar then i feel bad for all his passengers because they are all in danger if he is driving a bus like well i mean he's like drifting i mean he didn't he didn't he didn't agree that like it was it was like the bookstore guy telling him like oh your dreams did kind of come true and then he like like, talks about that look at it or whatever (laughs) yeah oh your dream came true you can drive a bus (laughs) no well now he drives like that little van remember the, the people in War of the Uber, Uber van. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, good. Yeah, the congratulations. Uber, the you, start, you started the Japanese Uber. <laughs> dude, he's set up to make millions, <laughs> fucking billions, dude. The guy's going to be so loaded. And then he's going to move to Tokyo. <laughs> and it'll all come full circle. And then the girl will I'm go because she likes shitty that town. Dude. Oh, no, she likes the drummer, dude. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Maki's younger brother. Maki, Maki's little brother. Yeah. 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 That guy. Um, we kind of also see um, Shiori, you know, appreciating her town and different things like that. Um, it's just more of the same shit. I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> it. There was honestly, it, I didn't I think, feel any resolution with Shiori whatsoever. She just was like at the beginning, like, oh, maybe I don't know, and she was like, yeah, I don't know, but I love my town, and it's like, what the fuck. It's not, it didn't feel well, she good says, at all. She says like, well, I'm never leaving, but I'm more willing to like travel. And he, she invites Erica like, hey, do you want to go to Tokyo with me for a couple of days? And Erica's like, no, I'm going to go when I'm older. Because um, <laughs> she hates you. Yeah, that was, yeah, she fucking hates. Well, it's because she gets in bitch. the bath with her. Well, she gets in the bath with her and you're like, are you showing off because your tits are floating? <laughs> That was an oh, awesome yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. That shit was hilarious. I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> like, why are you getting in the uh, bath with like this fucking 11 year old? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like, huh. I don't know. It was weird. And then uh, weird episode. Erica's brother runs away, and I was like, they're going to find the hang in snow. And then they hang lanterns, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. And the lanterns. And spoilers for Rolanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then his lantern goes out. <laughs> Wait, he's blow out the lantern. He was blow it out. Snow. He's dead. <laughs> no, we can't blow it out. We have to smother it in snow like his life. <laughs> well, it's like uh, when they're when they're 
<laughs> when they're uh, when they're in the park uh, looking for him or whatever, there's like a pile of snow, and they they like <laughs> yeah. it's like oh, Sunai's like oh, that's him. It's like, but it was like this hippo like uh, teeter totter yeah, thing. I was like, just just dig just dig under the hippo. He's under there like cradled. <laughs> <laughs> Just the hippo actually got moved by the snowstorm and crushed him. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Oh, this sounds like an exciting episode. episode. I mean, you know, it was to really watch it. exciting. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, the definitely. pacing, the pacing, the pacing was a little bit better this week, but it. it was yeah, mid. I agree. It wasn't like it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. I agree. Oh, we didn't I like talk Erica about too. Less, um, her her tooth hurt too, and she lost her tooth. Oh that right, yeah. Did she get punched? That's that's no. She, it just started hurting. <laughs> she's it's symbolizing her growing up. Oh. Yeah, she's she's oh so up. she's teething. And then yeah, yeah. and then, <laughs> she's, and then she had a little teeth ring the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <The>, uh, <laughs> well, and the uh, the t- you know the the shopping district in the town is like so supportive because they'll open up in the middle of a sto- snowstorm at night to give her baby aspirin, even though you could have given her like an adult aspirin, she wouldn't fucking die. Like. <laughs> She's like fucking no. Well, it on. says anyone under fifteen can't have an adult aspirin. It says so. I just kept thinking, why don't you just cut it in half? That because you just let they're her, like die in the snow. Like. <laughs> She clearly wanted to do that in Tokyo. So. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to go to Tokyo and not sleep. It's like, well, you where are you going to sleep? <clears throat> Somewhere. Well, you, you can't in a sleep net in cafe. Anywhere. You don't have any money. Oh, yeah, you can't sleep in this. Fine, I'll sleep on the street. You'll die. Okay, well, I won't sleep. Well, that won't change the fact that you'll die. You'll still be cold. <laughs> like, yeah, this, this, uh, this if middle I'm awake, school I'm not logic. Cold. Middle school exactly. Overwatch logic. Dude, when nice. I left middle school, I was ready for everything. I was like, dude, I'll take on the world right now. I know everything there is to know about everything. I need no more education. Isn't that how you are nice, like right dude. now too? So how's that? Yeah, I only have a middle school education. I never went to high school. Don't yeah. tell don't tell the government. They'll force me back to go to college or to yeah. high school. I don't even know what college Not is. Not even college. They're like, you can't even go to college. You, you can't even go to high, high school. school. You need to go to continuing education. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get your Whatever it's called when you GED, go back dude. From GED, yeah, you gotta yeah, get yeah, it, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get I it. gotta get my GED yeah. starting from freshman year. Because you were you were sixteen, dead. you were sixteen and pregnant and had to drop out because you went to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I'm a seahorse. He got knocked out. <coughs> knocked out. <laughs> Whoops, not knocked out. <laughs> I got knocked out. <laughs> I got knocked out well, both. for four well, both. years. Both. He got and knocked I couldn't out and go then knocked out. <laughs> I got yeah. knocked out and then and then I woke up and I was. And I was out of like out of the age to go to high school and college. I woke up and I yeah. was forty. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, you're forty? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I woke old. up and I was forty. That's what the doctors told me. I don't know how that works. I don't know math. Because I never went to high school. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense now. <laughs> you know basic you know basic math? You just don't know like fractions and stuff. That's <laughs> no, yeah, it doesn't yeah, even I don't know. know what that word is. Even, it's like I don't even What is math? <laughs> What's a fraction, dude? What's basic? I don't understand. All I understand is pumpkin spice lattes. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm basic. I'm a basic bitch with my pumpkin spice latte. You drinking a pumpkin spice yeah, latte? It's almost your you basic. PSL. Yeah, it's almost dude. your favorite PSL. time of the. It's almost your favorite time of the year, dude. Pumpkin spice beer, pumpkin spice oh, yeah. coffee, dude. Oh, you're, dude. you're fucking the ready for it. The pumpkin spice it. lattes are this. back. I'm so ready for the pumpkins. I'm gonna go to fucking Taps Brewing this year. Get a fucking growler of the pumpkin spice uh, beer, dude! Oh my god, I'm so excited. We're gonna we're gonna cover that one for sure. For, you said you're gonna get together with a uh, girl with cane <laughs> and just get like ten growlers of it and get in her wine cellar and just like age it for you know the whole year yeah. so you can have pumpkin spice all year long. And then she's yeah, and then gonna, gonna drink gonna, like and he's fucking gonna eight kick of her leg so that she can't have any. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to like go on a walk with her. And as she's taking a step with her cane, I'm going to kick out the cane. She's going to fall over and it's going to be hilarious. Be nice, dude. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's like great. It's like when you saw someone in school, like sleeping on their arm and you knock their arm out from under them and they head first into a desk and then they chip That's, their tooth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did that really happen? <laughs> no, I'm just saying because oh, like, oh. it's like Erica or whatever from Soccer Quest. She's just going to oh, yeah. break her tooth. Lost her tooth. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's life. Dude. Anyway, that's what happens. Soccer quest. <laughs> Don't go to Tokyo yep. if you're in middle school. Don't. You idiot. Don't. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> no, just under- Unless you're in um, Tokyo in middle school. 
<laughs> let's uh, let's talk about new game. Um, we get more character development uh, with uh, Momo and uh, what's her name, Narumi, the uh, cat coder. Na- bitch. Naru. Um, Naru, yeah. Um, we see best girl for a little bit this episode, um, which was the best part of the episode. But She's anyway, uh, Rolando, do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> she's great she's great uh rolando what'd you th- what'd you think about this one i liked it um this is a bit ahead of what i read because i haven't read like the last like five chapters um good yeah good uh but um i thought it was it was good uh we do get like you said character development on momo she's still kind of annoying Ugh. but now i get why she's annoying she's just awkward like really awkward <coughs> well, why the f- why the fuck does she eat so much i don't know it's, I, is that supposed to be like a moe trait or something is that i guess like, it's just weird she's like giant if, rice ball the, the the best quote was like well if i if i spend my money uh to eat till like, i am full like i won't be able to like pay rent or spend money on anything <laughs> Yeah, so she just buys bags of rice and then just has fucking rice balls. Like, what? You're just gonna get fat. No, dude. She's, she's, uh, what, 19? 19 year olds don't get fat. 19 year olds don't get fat. Once she hits 20, she'll get fat. No, I mean, like, you're familiar with the freshman 50 or whatever, um, that it is now. 18 year olds. Is it freshman 50 now? No, it's 15, but, like, you know what I'm saying. Oh. Like, some people go over. Oh, I was like, have they changed it because people, like, have gained more? Oh. Like 50 pounds is <laughs> no. a lot. That's it a lot of weight to put on. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, I just gained 50 pounds. NBD, I'll lose it next year. It's like, no, you won't, dude. No, you won't. Nice. That shit's going to stick nice. around for a while. Nice. Um, I think other than the character development, not a lot happened, but I definitely agree with you, Rolando. It's not that she's like mean or anything. She's just awkward and weird. Yeah, she <laughs> like, doesn't know how to so handle fucking herself. Weirdo. So well, like, she like had to write down I'm everybody's names and like yeah, and she's like, them? I do everything good, and like Hafumi, Hafumi's like, you know, you're doing great, like you, you're working faster than Alba, and she's like, Alba's my rival, I will kill her, like what? Just like, <laughs> chill Dude, out. I like the part where Hafumi was like, yet for some reason I'm more worried about you than I was about Alba, <laughs> and she's like, wait, what? <laughs> she like loses, she loses her shit. Yeah, like, she like eh. loses her shit. And she's like, oh, nothing. <laughs> That was the best. Yeah. Hufumi, Hufumi was the best part of this episode, though. Yeah. Although, one another good part of the episode had to be the fucking maid cafe with the fucking oh. boss lady because it was just so random as fuck. It was hilarious. I liked, though, they had... um God, what's her name? The girl who has all, like, the figurines and stuff. Hajime. Um, is that her? She's yeah. not part of the crew anymore. And she was like... You're cute enough just as you are standing there. So just take advantage of that. And then they just zoom in on her boobs. And she just looks over at him like, yeah, that's right. And the, <laughs> the all smug like, face. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like so smug. Dude, that was hilarious. Uh, that part made me laugh really, really good. So Yeah. Favorite oh, part of the episode. One nice. Of them. <laughs> good one. I see uh, you posted the image of uh, Alba and Momo making a heart. Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I have that as my computer background right now because it is Moe. Oh, <laughs> oh, the they made my the they made my uh, whatever. Yeah, they made my coffee Moe Moe Q. Oh, although uh, Alba kind of looked like she was casting a curse on the fucking coffee. Yeah, she did. <laughs> when she was well, trying to say she, like make this taste good, she's like make this taste good. It's like. <laughs> fucking witch i mean crap. remember she's like she's like devil succubus alba oh yeah that's right Fumi, so. oh yeah that's right <laughs> i forgot <laughs> <laughs> yeah um anything else that's kind of uh, what happened that was, um, i kind of like the momo's friend she seems like a fun mm-hmm. character whereas momo is just like mm, you know <clears throat> just weird. i think I, I think i like I think I like Momo, though, because she brings, like, some conflict to the show in, like, an everyday sense. Whereas, like, before, it was, like, every couple episodes, like, Alba's competing against Ko or, you know, 
they have to do something to reach the deadline. And I think Momo's just going to bring more conflict kind of every day. And it's good to kind of have that juxtaposition because <laughs> yeah. all, all the girls like are friends and nobody's like fighting each other for the most part. Um, so it, it'll be kind of interesting to see like what conflict arises out of her awkward well, social ineptices. Yeah. Well, Alba has like an actual realistic rival now because mm-hmm, you can't really mm-hmm. see Ko as her rival. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, we talked about that before. Yeah. It's like the eight years, ten years difference, whatever it is. Um, now Ko's yeah, kind of like their like mentor, I guess. Mm-hmm, and they're like mm-hmm. kind of rivals with one another. But like, I mean, yeah. I don't think Momo is bad in per se. I just think that she's just kind of an awkward character. I think yeah. that uh, her friend is I more agree. of a fun character. <laughs> one that would yeah. be more fun to hang out with than, than Momo. I think the one yeah. difference, though, <laughs> between Alba and Momo, though, is like Alba was trying to like rival Ko and can't. And so it's like Momo's only trying to rival Alba, but Alba kind of still thinks like I've got to try and eventually beat Ko. So I think she'll always still be doing better than Momo just because her sights are set higher. Oh yeah. So- Cause they kind of <clears throat> talk about that in the episode where she's like, how can she like, you know, like say something like that with a straight face or whatever? Mm-hmm. Because like Alba has always had her like sights set high and like mm-hmm. reaches for those heights. Whereas like Momo's like, her sights are set high, but she's like going for the more realistic goal, like in the in the meantime. Well, with that, with that too, I think Momo's like afraid to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean, it's even how she talks and things like that. Like, I d- I've done all my assignments. I'm doing everything I need to do. You know, everything I do is good. She's she's afraid to like kind of reach out and and fail. Be whereas excellent. Alba learns learns a lot like her through failures, her failures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And you can see that she's not afraid to fail because she fails all the fucking time. Like when she's crying <laughs> on, on Ko because she's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking lose. Like, yeah, you failed there. Like you fail all the time. But then she's like, fuck it. I'll do better next time. Like she just always perseveres or whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah. I like Alba. She's a cool character. Yeah. She yeah, embodies cool. the human spirit. The human spirit is rising. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Jay. Fuck um, Jay. I, I don't think you guys are watching it, but I wanted to talk uh, briefly about Kakegurui. Um, I haven't caught up yet. It's kind of... it. These these two episodes... I won't like go in depth to it, but uh, these two episodes kind of like go together. Basically, uh, the idol student council member um, thinks she's slick and is going to challenge uh, Yumiko. Um and so basically they challenge each other or she challenges her to a gamble and then multiple student council members up from the second year are kind of involved with this to kind of suit their own goals uh, because the student council leader is like off on some business trip in a helicopter and some shit. I don't know. Nice. Um, Makes sense. But anyway, it was it was it was a good episode. Um, a lot of fan service as always. Um, Yumiko it becomes like a pseudo idol, um, and that's like one of the things they gamble for. It's like if Yumiko loses, she owes the student council idol member like her life basically, and they're gonna be uh, an idol troupe together. Um, and so they sing and do like a game show sort of deal. It was, it was kind of cool. Um, anyway, good episodes. I recommend catching up on it. Um, and yeah, only a couple episodes left. So I'm curious to see if we get any sort of resolution or what's going to happen. Um, also lady cummies girl, like starts to like lose her mind halfway through an episode and she just like yells out i need to go to the bathroom it's like you know she's like gonna go fucking masturbate in there so you know lady cum- lady cummies all right lady cummies. pool of it's lady important cummies. interesting um, <clears throat> sounds important one one other update um i'm finally catching up on oari and i've uh recorded a couple different things in regards to the first uh half of it and then i have to watch the the last half so hopefully by this weekend i'll have it done it's super good like the the reason why it's taking so long is because it takes me a long time to process like what the fuck just happened because i have to pause like multiple times throughout and like think about it in the bigger picture of the entire anime what's going on and, and read it's the a four lot paragraphs on the screen yeah and it's it's a lot of symbolism it's a lot of like 
figuring out alternative motives and it's all going to culminate like into this one crazy shit show, um, which I'm really looking forward to, to watching, but it's just like a lot to process. Uh, so I'm taking my time with it because I want to do it correctly. Um, so hopefully by, uh, this weekend, um, I'll have everything done. Um, but no promises, uh, like I said, <laughs> so, um, one last thing we want to talk about, uh, Rolando actually went to Dragon Con, uh, this oh, weekend. Yeah, uh, do you want to talk <laughs> about your, uh, experience there at all, Rolando? Yeah. I've been to a couple of them. Um, I kind of warned him that it would be kind of shit because it's overgrown, um, the venue and things like that. I wanted to know personally, like what you thought of it in that regard. And if you did enjoy yourself um, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of decided to go on a whim because my sister said she was going like, she's in Atlanta right now. So she's like, just come. I'm like, all right. Um, and so it was interesting. Um, I kind of felt like, all right, well, one good thing was they definitely handle um, getting people their badges way better than yeah. Anime Expo. <laughs> yeah, but everyone yeah, does it better than yeah. Anime Expo. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's the worst that has ever been. That's that's what I'll say. <laughs> but what what I find very inconvenient, and like you kind of warned me about this, was that everything is spread out across a bunch of hotels. And it's like super annoying because... You're like, oh, I want to go to the exhibit halls. It's like, all right, well, we got to go to America's Mart. And then mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, spread across like the like three floors. And then there's like, oh, like I want to check out some of the gaming tournaments or like tabletop, like go play some tabletop games. All right, well, you got to go to building one of America's Mart. Okay. And it's like, oh, I want to go see this panel. Oh, it's all the way in the Marriott. Oh, I want to go see this. It's like, oh, it's all the way over here. It's just like so much. It's so spread out. And basically, Mm -hmm. you could honestly attend Dragon Con and just people watch without buying a badge because everyone's like just in the streets of downtown Atlanta. And um, so it's just I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy that aspect because I'm more used to having a more enclosed con like Comic Con, where it's a big con, but it's in the same convention center. And then there's yeah, there's some experiences at like some of the restaurants in in downtown San Diego. Store. Yeah, but like for the most part, like the panels, like um, all the signings, and you know the vendors, they're all at the convention center. And so I don't know, it was just kind of annoying. My sister and her boyfriend kind of found it annoying too, um, that we had to walk around a lot, especially like end of end of summer in Atlanta. It's not like blazing hot outside, but it's humid, so you're just like sweating, especially if you're in in cosplay. Um, it was it was interesting. I didn't hate it, but at the same time, like we kind of felt like we didn't have much to do. So we like kind of just walked around exhibit halls. Um, there was some awkward stuff that happened because my sister dressed up as 2B. And so a lot of random dudes were like asking to take pictures. And like <laughs> there's one specific part where um, this dude asked her to like pretend to kiss him on the cheek for the picture. And then he <laughs> like um, he like <laughs> kissed her on the cheek. And then my sister's boyfriend got all pissed. He's like, hey, you're trying your <laughs> luck there, kid. And <laughs> just like getting all mad. Uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. But yeah, it was just, it was interesting. The The best part about it, I think, was we went to the Georgia Aquarium um, at night, which was like a Dragon Con thing. And they had like bars, cash bars where you could like buy drinks, look at the um, the animals. It was cool. The fishies. Yeah, the the aquarium's like the coolest part. Like I've done that too, and the, that was like the coolest part <clears throat> for me because it's like not it's so crowded, but it's not like chaos crowded. Like, yeah, it wasn't filling it wasn't the streets like, of randomness. It, like. it wasn't like Anime Expo crowded where you literally have no walking room. Um, but mm. the parade was on Saturday, and that's the day we went, and that was really annoying to get across to 
the other side of Peachtree. So it, it's like you're just trying to cross Peachtree to get to the other side of the convention and the parade's going on. And so you're like, well, how do I get over there? You walk all the way around the parade route yeah. or do you like, so like people try to go like down, down the Marta um, and then go underneath and then they're like blocking off some of the exits on the other side. It's just like super like poorly handled. Like, I don't know. Like they, it was just weird. Honestly, Saturday is probably the worst day to go to because it's like most of the people are there on Saturday. Yeah. Um, when when I went um, before, like we don't even go on Saturday. Like we do something else in Atlanta and then we go on like Friday and uh, Sunday. It's usually a, a better experience. Probably is, yeah. In my opinion, but at the at the end of the day, it's just out. It's outgrown the venue. It's It's not fun because you're just... It's like you said, you go from, oh, I'm going to an expo hall and I have to stand in line to get into there and it's super crowded in there. And then if you want to go do something else, oh, I have to stand in line to get into the building and then maybe you get to do it. And it's like, you know, you can't even like attend panels. There's so many people. It's yeah, like there are the people waiting. Of you getting in. Yeah. The chance of you getting in are super low because people are waiting like four hours ahead of time just to get in and have a seat. It's like it's impossible. It's it's outgrown it. Um I'll maybe go in the future if they move it to like a convention center that can handle that many people or limit the amount of people that can go. But as far as it is now, like there's no limit. Anybody can go to it. And it's just like a shit show. Um, Doesn't Atlanta like, like have you a said, pretty Zuru, big convention center? Yeah. Um, and like the, I, the, the convention center had um, Momocon there. And that was actually a super awesome convention. They were um, I highly recommend there. that one. <laughs> It's uh, it's purely anime. Um, it fits in the venue that they have it for. Um, you can do everything that you want. Um, they have like Tokyo Attack comes and sets up the Japanese arcade. It's it's super awesome. It was like one of the better conventions that I've ever been to um, because they handle badges well and there's lines, but it's like reasonable and it's like in a venue that can handle it. So. I'd rather do that if I go back to Atlanta, um, when I go back to Atlanta, um, but Dragon Con, probably not. It's just, it's, it's too big and it's yeah. not, it's not that fun. <laughs> the the interesting about it was that was also like opening weekend for college football. So like <clears throat> a bunch yeah, of, yeah. a bunch of teams were traveling over from, um, you know, just around, um, like the ACC and the SEC, um, to mm-hmm. play, at the Mercedes Benz Center, the new uh, Falcon Stadium. Yeah, because because I, I think uh, it was Alabama and um, Florida was, State, yeah. which are both like ranked one and two or something. Well, <laughs> like not, two of the biggest. Not teams. after that game. <laughs> I didn't see who won. Oh, um, Alabama destroyed nothing. Florida State. They did. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, but yeah, they were doing that in the new Falcon Stadium. Um, the Mercedes Benz, uh, dome or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, but yeah, it, it always happened like that too. Cause like when we were taking the Marta, which is like their subway system, like you always see like Georgia bulldog, like fans, like on the subway and they like give you like awkward looks if you're in cosplay and stuff, they're like, Oh, it must be dragon gone. And they're like all pissed off about it. <laughs> Whereas like the other traveling like fans mess. are like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't know. It's like it's like a big spectacle, kind of how Comic Con is here, um, and like people like embrace it um, in Georgia, or they either embrace it or they hate it. But like we said, kind of outgrown the nostalgia or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Other parts of uh, Atlanta are cool, but uh, yeah, Atlanta's a cool city. It's like uh, it's really like up and coming. Like Atlanta's been up and coming, but like actually getting to see it in person it was like yeah the city is like really growing yeah atlanta's cool i i definitely enjoy enjoy it especially when um freeways don't collapse because of fires oh i saw the freeway <laughs> that's i saw that's the new cool. section that was built <laughs> it, it was clearly not burnt because it was new <laughs> nice <laughs> that makes sense anyway clearly not burnt yeah anyway um <laughs> I think that kind of wraps it up unless uh, you guys got anything else you want to talk about. No, nah, I got nothing, bro. No. 
Cool. Well, uh, thanks for listening. As always, guys, check out our uh, WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. has all the links to episodes, blogs, etc. Check out our Twitter, at Anime on Draft, as well as SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Search for Anime on Draft. Um, good episode, guys. Uh, 22 in the books. Um, anything else you want to say, or should we uh, let it go? Let's let it go. Let's let it go. All right. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Don't don't freeze in Tokyo. Get a job. <laughs> get a job. <laughs> right. Get a job. Don't get Graduate frozen. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>